Hi, you guys. Today we're talking about gravitational forces and the life cycle of stars. We're not going to spend too much time talking about gravity because you guys already know all about this. Remember, things with more mass have more gravitational pull. The Earth's gravity pulls matter to the surface of the Earth, okay? Um, if something is falling, it's going to fall to the Earth's surface. Now let's relate this concept to objects in space, okay? Earth is bigger than the moon, so the moon is going to be pulled towards us. We are going to keep that moon in orbit around us because we pull it in. The moon is not going to be able to float out in space at any point because we are constantly pulling it back towards us. We can do this because we have more mass than the moon, so we have a stronger gravitational pull than it does. So it cannot pull away from us, okay? Now, on a larger scale, the sun has a massive amount of mass. It is so big and we are itty bitty in comparison to the sun. So the earth and all the other planets are going to be pulled toward the sun. The sun's gravity is going to be stronger than our gravity. So we're not able to float out into space because the sun is always pulling us in. Okay. So, um, that is how the earth and the other planets ma maintain um, in the sun's orbit, okay? So remember, more mass equals more gravitational pull. Now this theory um, that eventually became law was proposed by Sir Isaac Newton, okay? Um, every object is, no matter how big it is, um, has some sort of gravitational pull, okay? Everything has a gravitational pull, but the larger the mass, the stronger the pull, okay? And that is what Sir Isaac Newton found out. Now, the other thing that we have to think about is the distance between two objects and how that affects how much gravitational pull um, one of the objects will feel, okay? So the closer these two objects are, the more gravitational pull there will be between them. And then as that distance increases, the less pull the objects will feel. Let's relate this back to the planets, okay? So if we have the sun here and we know that our planets revolve around the sun, we know that our planets don't revolve around the sun in a pretty little line, right? We all kind of revolve at different rates. And that's because the sun's gravitational pull is much stronger on those planets that are closer to the sun and not quite as strong on the planets on the outer um, part of our solar system, like the dwarf planet Pluto, okay? So the planets that are nice and close to the sun, they're gonna re revolve in a tight little a circle around the sun, whereas the planets that are on the outer part, like that dwarf planet Pluto that I mentioned, it's going to have more of an elliptical uh, revolution. So they're not all going to revolve at the exact same rate at the exact same time, okay? And this is because of the distance um, between them and the sun. Now let's talk about the life cycle of stars here. Um, first, we have nebulas. Let's look over here. I've got nebulas. These are globs of hydrogen atoms or dust particles, okay? In a hydrogen nebula, where's my little mouse here? Ooh, where'd it go? There it is. In a hydrogen nebula, the hydrogen gas is drawn in by gravity together into a progressively smaller and denser cloud until eventually it coalesces into a sphere that becomes very, very dense, okay? The immense gravity at the core of this causes the individual hydrogen atoms to be fused together to form helium atoms, okay? And it's releasing a lot of energy during this process. When this starts to happen, a new star is born. Now, most stars wind up here on the main sequence. Um, and the main sequence, we'll talk about that in our next lesson, but again, this is where most stars in our universe are going to fall, okay? Um, they're going to spend their life here supplying light and heat to their surroundings, okay? Now, stars that are about twice as big as our, as our sun and anything smaller than that, so that would include our sun, they eventually evolve off the main sequence 
and form a red giant, okay? A red giant is um, a star that has a less mass and it expands and glows red as it cools, okay? So they will begin to swell in size, so they're getting bigger and they're kind of gonna brighten, but they turn redder because of their surface is actually a little bit cooler than when they were in the main sequence. Eventually, these uh, red giants are going to become planetary nebula, and then they are going to evolve into white dwarfs, and they're gonna exist here for a very long time. We're talking like billions of years. They'll be a white dwarf. And then after billions of years, they're going to cool down to a point where um, they eventually um, no longer emit any light and they're going to become a black dwarf, okay, which is this. Now, stars that are about three times as big as our sun, okay, so we're talking three solar masses um, that is three times as big as our sun, they're not going to become a red giant, they're going to become a super giant, okay, and they're going to use up their hydrogen gas much quicker. Okay, so they're not going to last nearly as long as the, on the main sequence as um, stars that are twice as big as our sun and smaller, simply because they're so big, they're going to use up that hydrogen gas a lot quicker. Okay, and then they're going to leave um, being a super giant and then they're going to um, going to become a supernova. Okay, so after they convert helium into carbon, carbon into oxygen, oxygen eventually into iron. When this um when the star mark when the star starts making iron, that's it. That's the end game for the star. It takes more energy to make iron um, that is released in the process. It's like an endothermic reaction. And thus this cause this causes the star to not be able to support itself. In just a matter of seconds, the star will first collapse onto itself and then bounces outward again in a supernova explosion. And the result of that explosion is either a neutron star um, or um, a black hole. That's it. All right, you guys, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.